Today on our 2008 Mazda CX-7, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the DrawTight Max Frame Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number 75512. Here's what this hitch is going to look like once it's installed on the vehicle. As you can see, overall it's pretty well hidden. Really what you're just going to see is the receiver tube here, the safety chain connection points, and then over here is the bracket that's welded onto the cross tube that's going to allow you to mount up wiring. It's really nice because if you're planning on towing a trailer on a regular basis, that's going to give you a nice easy access point to be able to get to your wiring and not have to pull it out of your trunk or just have it connected down here. But that gives you a good sturdy location so that you can always get to it easily. Now this hitch has a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and this nice welded on reinforcement collar around that receiver tube opening. Here we've got our standard 5 8 inch hitch pin hole that's going to secure all of our accessories. And then we've got the smaller half inch hole here and that's going to be used for the J-pin stabilization system. The safety chain connection points are this nice rounded steel and that's going to give us really good access to get in just about any type of safety chain connection that you may have. This hitch features a 350 pound max tongue weight rating and a 3500 pound gross trailer weight rating. And you will want to be sure to refer to the owner's manual of your vehicle to be sure that it's capable of that type of weight. Now let's give you some measurements to help assist you with your selection of hitch mounted accessories such as ball mounts, bike racks, or cargo carriers. The distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the rear bumper is about six and one quarter inches and the distance from the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening to the ground is about 12 and one quarter inches. Let's show you how to install this hitch. First thing we're going to need to do to begin our installation is we're going to need to let this exhaust system hang a little bit so that we can gain access to our mounting holes. But before we let that exhaust hang, it's a good idea to put a support strap across so when it's hanging it doesn't hang too much to where it may damage any of the exhaust components. So now we'll need to take these rubber isolators off of the hangers. And there's going to be two on each side. I'm going to put a little bit of spray lubricant up onto these to help assist with removal. So then you can use a pair of channel lock pliers or a pry bar if you don't have an actual exhaust hanger removal tool. Then we'll do that same thing on the other side in order to let it hang. So then once you get the last one off there, you can let it down to where it hangs a little bit. So that way, you can see now we've got much better access to the holes that our hardware will come through. So now we're going to need to enlarge one of the two holes because we need to be able to get our spacer to fit up through there. And it can't quite do that with the size they are now. So I'm going to take a drill with a file bit on it and you can just use a hand file that'll work well too but what I'll do is just enlarge it on one side a little bit enough that I'm going to be able to slide that spacer up through there as you can see with it enlarged now that spacer will slide right up through there so now what we'll do just take one of the supplied fish wires, send the coil end through the rear hole to the front hole that we enlarged. We'll send it through there. And then we'll put one of the spacer blocks up onto it. And then we'll feed in one of our 7 16 carriage bolts. And then we'll feed the block up into the frame rail, followed by our carriage bolt and then gently pull them through to that hole there. And then for the hole that we enlarged, before we feed it into the frame, we'll put our spacer block on, then our carriage bolt, and this time we'll feed our carriage bolt up into the frame first, followed by the spacer block, and then pull them back down through that hole. And then we'll repeat the same process for the other side. Now it's a good idea to get a second set of hands in order to put the hitch up into place. So we'll slide it up over the exhaust. And we'll get it behind 
there. And then you want to be sure to not push the carriage bolt back up into the frame. You can take one of the conical teeth washers with teeth facing up towards the hitch. And then get one of the nuts onto the carriage bolt. And once you've got one on each side, you can let it hang in order to start the rest of your hardware. Once we've made sure that the hitch is centered on the vehicle, we can take an 11 16th socket and tighten up our hardware. Once we've got all of our hardware tightened down, we want to go back and be sure that it's all torqued down to the specification listed in the instructions. Once our hitch is all torqued down, we can go back and reinstall our exhaust. Then we can remove our support strap and we're ready to use our hitch. And that's going to complete our look at and installation of the Draw Type Max Frame Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver part number 75512 on our 2008 Mazda CX-7. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.